Hi, in this uh, tutorial I will give an overview of uh, case structures in LabVIEW and how we can use them. So, uh, on your uh, block diagram where you create your LabVIEW code, you just right click to get this, uh, the palette, the functions palette, and then you select structures, and in the structures palette you have different uh, uh, structures and loops, like for loop, while loop, etc., and you also find the case structure. Basically, uh, the case structure is very similar to an if-else in other uh, programming languages or the case uh, structure that is also available in uh, many programming languages. So here, uh, you basically just drag it to the um, block diagram and then you can create different uh, cases. Here you see a basic example. Here on the front panel I have created a, a boolean true-false and then I have created a case structure and then I just wire this uh, boolean variable into the case structure on the question mark here and then automatically a true case and a false case uh, will be created and then you can create different logic in the true case and in the false case. So in this basic example I just create a text here, the true case is executed and then I put it to the string that I put here on the front panel and in the false case, I have created an another string. The false case is executed, and then I put it and show it in, in the string uh, indicator here on the front panel. So you can wire uh, many different uh, data types to the case uh, structure. In this case, I have wired a text string, and then you can create your own cases here and just uh, type any text you want here. And also when you uh, right click on the case structure border, you will get lots of uh, options that you can use to deal with the case structure. You can uh, uh, replace the case structure with a stacked sequence if you want to do that. You can remove the case structure, you can add a case after, before, you can duplicate the case, delete the case, remove empty case, and then you can also rearrange the cases. If you have many cases here, you can just select rearrange cases and then you will select the proper order which the case cases should appear in. Here you see some basic examples where I have wired different data types to a case structure. Here I have used a so-called enum and then automatically the cases that are written in the enum is created here in, in the uh, case structure. For a boolean automatically you are um, lab you create two different cases, true and false. Here I have uh, put a error cluster on the input on this question mark and then automatically two cases has been created, no error and error. And here for the string uh, input here, this is the most flexible one, then you need to create uh, your cases here uh, by yourself. Uh, and here you need to be aware of that if you um, make a spelling mistake, then you will um, probably get an unwanted error in your code. Assuming you you enter a string here called string um, space and, and a one, and then this case will not be executed because here there is no space between string and the one number. So here you need to be aware of the spelling. Um, in your cases. So let's go to LabVIEW and create some basic uh, examples where I use the case structure. So now I have opened my LabVIEW programming environment. Here I have the home panel where I create my graphical user interface and here I have the block diagram where I create the LabVIEW code. So then typically you here on the uh, block diagram you just right click, select structure and then the case structure. And then you just drag it like this. You can make it as big as big or small as you want. Just drag in the corner like this. And then the next step is to wire something on this uh, question mark. You can also um, click Control H to get help regarding the case structure. And then you can click on Detail Help to get more help regarding this case structure. And let's start creating a basic example. Uh, I can use a boolean here. I can use this checkbox or on one of the other boolean uh, variables or controls here. I just use this one. 
And then I can instead of off on I can say false um, true. And then I can wire this checkbox to the question mark like this. And, uh, automatically two cases has been created false and true. And then uh, in addition let's create a string indicator here. So assuming I'm in the in the false case then I can just right click here create a string um, I type something like this I am in the false case and then I wire this one to this uh, string which is here and I can just copy this one and put also something into the true case and wire it here and then I just change the text I am in the true case so that's a basic example where I'm using a case structure I wire a boolean variable to the question mark and then I, we have two cases namely false and true so this is a basic if else sentence that you typically use in another language so then I just uh, run the code so now since this was false I am in the false case so this only this part of the code has been executed I can change this to true run it I am in the true case this means that only this part of the code has been executed so this is how um, a basic case structure works in labview so let's uh, wire another data type instead so then I just uh, remove this one basically remove everything like this remove this one and then let's uh, create a enum instead you find enum here enum and enum is a predefined uh, list of uh, items so then I can type some uh, items inside the enum it could be different cars Volvo and I just right click add item after Ford add item after um, Tesla or something so then you have three option, options Volvo, Ford and Tesla and then when I, die, when I create a new case structure and then wire this enum to the question mark like this then automatically these different options has been created Volvo and Ford and then in order to create the last one Tesla I can just uh, right click here add case after and then this Tesla is created so here I cannot create uh, other cases than the options that are in the in the enum so I can in this case have three cases Volvo Ford and Tesla and here Volvo Ford and Tesla and I can choose one of them to be default so then assuming I want the Ford to be default instead I can just right click and then uh, make this case the default and then the Ford will be the default change it back to, to this one like this and uh, let's uh, create some uh, text string inside here so then Volvo here I can type a text string I am driving a Volvo or something I just wire it to this uh, output of course I can create any kind of output or do any kind of logic inside here and now I can just copy this one and now you see this output here is uh, white that means that not all cases are connected so when I put this one inside here I'm driving a Ford and wire this one it's still white because I'm missing the third case this Tesla which I put in here I'm driving a Tesla and then I wire it to this um, 
right side and then you see now it becomes a pink inside and not white and this means that all the different cases has been wired and if I remove this one you also see that the code will not be executed and if I click on this one tunnel missing assignment to tunnel this means that I need to wire this one in order to make the code to be executable like this so now I can run it I can select Ford then I'm driving a Volvo so only this part of the code is executed Ford run it I'm driving a Ford and then only this part of the code will be executed and the same for Tesla and then only this part of the code will be executed so you can put different data types here let's just put instead of the enum let's just create a text uh, variable or a text control like this case selection or something I can call it then assuming I'm typing here Tesla and then I wire this on to the question mark like this so I still have uh, Volvo Ford and Tesla so now it says Tesla then it goes into this case called the Tesla and I'm driving a Tesla so let's type something else Ford and run it and then it goes into this uh, this um, case but assuming I'm typing something that is not existing the Toyota and then since there is no case called Toyota it will go into the default case which is Volvo in this case so if I change the default case to um, let's say the Ford this is the default case and now run it no it will go into the fourth case because this is the default case uh, I can also do like this I can create um, another case add the case after and I can make this one the default case like this so now I have four cases Volvo, Ford, Tesla and default and then I can type something here and then I can type some message here um, no cases for this option or something so then if I type something here that uh, don't exist here either Volvo for the Tesla it will go into this uh, default case like this so if I run it now no cases for this option so this is a good practice because you can also have a spelling mistake here assuming instead of uh, Volvo you type a spelling mistake Volvo with two O's or something and then uh, when you run it you see uh, no cases for this, this option this means that it goes into this part of the code and then you as a developer understands that you have done some spelling mistake here and then you just change it and then it works as expected so basically case structures are uh, um, very handy to use in your library program and I guess all kind of uh, library programs are using one or more cases and then you can put all types of data types in here either numeric, string, boolean, enum uh, etc you can also type or use uh, this uh, error in cluster and wire it um, to a case structure I just remove this one create a new case structure and then when I wire this error cluster in here uh, there will be automatically created two different cases one called no error and one called error and then you can do different um, coding depending on you get an error in here or not an error so let's go back to the this 
car version, then you have these um, three cars volume for Tesla de a default. And then on there, if you right click here, you have, as mentioned, lots of options. You can add the case after or before. You can duplicate the cars, uh, a, a case. So assuming you want to create a new case, then you can use this, uh, for instance, this one as a template to create a new one. So then I just create and duplicate and then I create a similar case and then I can just create a new case name here. And then typically I can add this, um, let's say I can type Toyota here, like this, Toyota, and then I can create a new case called Toyota, like this. So I'm driving a Toyota. And then I run it, and then this case will be executed. I can also rearrange the different cases when I click this one. I can put the Toyota on top like this, and even so, um, then, so the order here isn't um, doesn't have any practical meaning. But typically, you want to have it in a specific order when you create your program. But as long as you type Toyota here, the case called uh, Toyota will be executed depending on it's on top or in bottom. Or in the middle here. If I put it in the middle, still the Toyota case will be executed like this. You also have to be aware of upper and lower cases. So then I'm um, assuming I'm typing Toyota here with an upper case A at the end. And here it's Toyota with a lower case A at the end. So let's run it now. And then it will go into the default case because the cases are case sensitive. But if you don't care about case sensitivity, you can uh, change it. Right click here and then case insensitive match and now if I run it now it will go into the Toyota case even if this is an uppercase A and you have a lowercase a here. Next let's see how we can use a case structure to create a, a basic uh, calculator or something and then I can start by creating an enum I can call it mode or operation or whatever and then I can create add after um, multiply divide and then finally um, minus or something so then I have these four different types add multiply divide and minus and then I can, since this is an enum I can just create a case structure like this and then just write it to the question mark and then by default two of the cases are created add and multiply and then I can just add the others add the case after divide add ca case after and minus so now I have four cases add multiply divide and minus and let's now create two numeric here a numeric um, one and numeric two like this and then a numeric indicator with the answer like this and then I put those on the input side on the left side and then I put the answer on the right side of this uh, case structure. Let's start with uh, add. And in add case, I create the logic for the add part of the calculator. So then I just use this uh, add. And then I just wire like this. And then the output goes to this answer like this and then I can do the same for the others 
assuming. Uh, so now I can create uh, here, I can use the uh, multiply, etc. But let's also delete those. So uh, delete this case, delete this case, and delete this case. And now I only have the add case, so then I can use this as a template and duplicate case. I do the same here. Duplicate case and finally duplicate case. So now I have four cases and now I just need to replace this one with a multiply sign. So then I just mark it, right click and then replace numeric palette with a multiply sign. So then I don't need to wire all these wires. Same for the divide. I just click on it, replace numeric palette and divide. And the same for the minus. Click on it, replace numeric palette, and then find this substract like this. So let's now just run the calculator. Here I type two numbers, five and two. I select add, and then the answer will be five plus two will be seven, meaning this part of the code is executed. Multiply 5 times 2 will be 10. So this part of the code will be executed. Divide 5 divided by 2 will be 2.5, meaning this part of the code will be executed. And finally, minus 5 minus 2 will be 3, meaning this part of the code will be executed. So this is how we create a basic uh, calculator in Labio using a case structure uh, like this.